Hello and welcome. In this video we will calculate the value at risk of one asset and subsequently of a portfolio consisting of multiple assets. In the end we will get real stock prices and calculate the value at risk out of that stock portfolio. As an introducing sentence, the value at risk is one of the most common risk measures and you might have an exposure to it if you are working or just interested in finance, risk or even data science. I already imported two modules here, one is SciPy stats for calculating quantiles and NumPy to create vectors and matrices. In the first step, let us take a look at the formula. The value at risk for one day is just the position size, so for example a stock which you are holding, times the daily volatility of that position, which is commonly calculated by taking the standard deviation of the daily returns over the last year times the quantile of the standard normal distribution. Maybe you have attended a statistics course someday where you have used tables to get those values, but SciPy stats is doing this work for us. So let us define a function where we define that value at risk. Let's just call that VAR and we are taking the position size, let's just call that position sigma for the daily volatility and the quantile as the arguments. This function should just return us the product of those parameters. So position times sigma times, and now we are using scipy.stats.norm.ppf and we are taking the quantile as an argument. Let us quickly understand what this function is doing. So let's insert a cell here we're just using scipy.stats.norm.ppf and let's check for the 95% probability and we are getting a value of 1.64 so let's take a look at those good old tables here I've opened that with a Google search here so as you see 0.95 we have and this is providing a value of 1.64 here and this is exactly what we have here so this is working right now let's execute that and test this function by calling it with var and provide some parameters. So let's just assume we have a position size of $1,000, we have a daily volatility of 5% and we are interested in the 95% quantile. And as you see we are getting a value at risk of $82 something. So how can we interpret that? With a probability of 95%, the expected loss of our one day position will not exceed $82 something. Or the other way around, with a probability of 5%, the expected loss of our one day position will exceed $82 something. Okay, I think or I hope we got that. Now let's approach to calculate the value at risk of a portfolio of multiple stocks. First, let us understand how the portfolio variance is calculated. Because we need the portfolio volatility, which is just the square root out of the portfolio variance, to use this var function, right? So, as you see, now we got a single stock position and a volatility of that position and a quantile. And if we have a portfolio, we need the volatility of this whole portfolio and then we can provide the size of the portfolio, the portfolio volatility and the quantile we are interested in and work with that value at risk function. To calculate the portfolio variance of a portfolio containing two assets, let us consider this formula which I'm just copy pasting here. I won't go much into details on this formula but take it as a template to calculate our portfolio volatility which is just the square root out of the portfolio variance that you can better follow along. I will provide a link for more details on this formula in case you are not familiar with that. So let us define the parameters of this portfolio variance. So the first one is the weight of the first asset, W1. So let's assume the weight of the first asset is just 50%, so 0.5. So in our case, if our portfolio is worth $1,000, the first asset is worth $500. The second weight is therefore 50% as well. The daily volatility of the first asset is, let's just define that as sigma 1, and let's just assume that is, let's say, 0.07, so we have 7% daily volatility. 
uh, sigma 2, so the daily volatility for the second asset is, let's just say it's 3%, and we need this one here, this is the correlation coefficient between those assets, and let's just assume that is, so we are defining that as core, that is um, 40%, so 0 0.4. Okay, so let us calculate the portfolio variance as described here. So we are defining portfolio var is w1 squared times sigma1 squared plus w2 squared times sigma2 squared plus 2 times w1 times w2 times sigma1 times sigma2 times the correlation coefficient. So this is our portfolio variance. So let's get our portfolio volatility and that is just the square root of the portfolio variance. So we are just taking portfolio variance and take the square root out of that. So we have defined our portfolio volatility. Let's check that out. And as you see here, we have a portfolio volatility of roughly 4.3%. And with that, we have everything what we need to calculate the value at risk of this portfolio. So let us call the value at risk function again and provide the value of the portfolio, which is $1,000 as said, and then the portfolio volatility as the daily volatility of this portfolio. And we are interested in the 95% probability again. And what we are getting is a value at risk of 71 dot something. Okay, until now pretty straightforward, right? Now let us repeat this procedure with a more algebraic approach. The goal of this is to create a procedure where we can calculate the value at risk for more than two assets. To make this possible, first let us try to do that for this two asset portfolio and check if we are getting the exact same result for the value at risk. The first step is to get the value at risk of the two components of the portfolio. Therefore, let us call the function VAR and provide the first position, which is just the portfolio value times the weight of the first asset. Also, we need the daily volatility, so that is sigma 1, and we are interested in the 95% quantile. So let us store that in VAR1, so this is the value at risk for the first asset, and the same logic for the second asset, so we are just calling the function, provide 1000 times V2, sigma 2, and again 0 0.95. So let's execute that and with those two values of risk we can build a vector using NumPy. We need a vector here to perform vector matrix multiplications which you will see in some seconds. So let's define vector as np.array and we are just taking the two values of risk here. So var1 and var2. So let's print that out. Now we have a vector of the values of risk which can be seen as our weights. The next step is to create a correlation matrix of our assets. Therefore let's define core matrix and we're using np.array, use two squared brackets and define the first row of this matrix and that is one, one because we have the correlation between the first and the first asset which is of course one, so 100% and the correlation between the first and the second asset, which is our correlation coefficient core. The second row is vice versa here. So we are just using core and one, so one because we have the correlation between the second asset and the second asset. So let's print that out, maybe this is more clear. So as you see, we have the diagonal here. This is the correlation between the first and the first asset and this is the correlation between the second and the second asset, and these two are the correlations between the two different assets. Okay? 
Now it's getting even more algebraic here as we will do some vector matrix multiplications. I will link some helpful resources in the description that you can better understand what's going on here. Essentially what we are doing is to get the dot product out of the vector containing the weight and the correlation matrix. And then again get the dot product out of the resulting vector again with the vector containing the weights. So let us code that. Maybe this is way more accessible as in words. So we're using np dot and take the vector and our correlation matrix. And then we are getting a vector out of that. And this vector we're using to get the dot product out of this vector and the vector containing the values at risk. With that, we have calculated the squared value at risk of this portfolio. So we have to get the square root out of that. So we are just using the square root here and execute that. And with that, we have calculated the value at risk of this portfolio. So let us compare that with a buff to see if we got it right. And as you see, we are perfectly fine. We have calculated the exact same value of risk using this algebraic approach. The cool thing with this procedure now is that the number of assets is not limited. So you can take a huge amount of assets and still calculate the value at risk of this portfolio containing a huge amount of assets. So let us apply that to real data and let's take a portfolio consisting of three assets. For that I'm using the pandas data reader and I won't go much into details here. I've covered that in many videos on my channel to get stock prices from the internet. So I'm just importing the pandas data reader and the date time module here. Uh, execute that and define our time horizon. So the end date is the day of or the date of today. So I'm just using the now function and the start date is just one year back. Why one year back? Because we want to get the standard deviation of the daily returns over the last year as said in the beginning of this uh, video. So I'm just going one year back. Take the month here and the day and perform my online request with reader.get underscore data underscore jahoo and Let's just take, um, what can we take? We can take Apple, uh, Microsoft, and let's just take Tesla here. So this is our portfolio consisting of three assets here. Provide the start date and the end date. And we are only interested in the adjusted close price. Let's execute that. And as you see, we're getting the prices of those assets here. Let's store that in a data frame, which we are calling the F. And with that, we are defining our returns. And I'm just using the uh, logarithm here of the uh, daily changes. So I'm just using PCT underscore change here. And we can print that out, actually. So we have our daily returns now. And with that, I can get my uh, daily volatility by just using the standard deviation function of pandas. So I get a daily volatility of Apple of 2.8%, Microsoft 2.7% roughly, and Tesla of 5.5%. Uh, okay. Insane. Um, yeah, and now I have to define my position size. So we are just assuming that we are buying one of each asset. Okay, so we are just buying. So let's print that out again. We are just buying one Apple stock, one Microsoft stock and one Tesla stock. So we are just buying this row, if you want to call it like this. Okay, so this is our portfolio. So let's define our position as df.ilog. We're just taking the very last row here. So let's print that out that you see what is going on here. So we're buying an Apple stock for 115 roughly, Microsoft for 215 and Tesla for 431 here, okay? Now we want to get the value at risk of every of those assets. Remember the value at risk function which we defined above was taking the position, the daily volatility and the quantile as arguments. 
So we can just iteratively add the positions, so Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, and the volatilities, Apple, Microsoft, Tesla, and the quantile, which is always the same, 95%, to an array. So let's create VAR array here. We're just defining that as an empty list. And now we're using a loop for i in range, and we're just taking the length of position. So this is just for i in range 3 here. And now we're doing the following. We are using our VAR function and provide the position and use the iterator to index this position. So in the first iteration we are getting the position size of Apple and we are also providing the daily volatility of Apple by using returns.std. So this is this one here and again use the iterator as the index and also we are providing the 95% quantile here. Now we only have to append this thing to this array so we are just using var array dot append and append this whole stuff here. So let's execute that and take a look at this array. So as you see we are getting the values at risk for Apple, Microsoft and Tesla. Okay. Now as before we have to create a vector out of that. So we are defining again vector and now we can just use np array and just provide the var array here and have our vector and now we need the correlation matrix and this time we can go a very easy way and we can just use returns dot core and as you see now we are getting a correlation matrix out of that right so we can just do the exact same thing as we did before so we are using the dot product out of the vector and the correlation matrix returns core and then take the dot product out of that and again the vector and we have our squared value at risk and if we are taking the square root out of that we have successfully calculated the value at risk for the stock portfolio containing Apple, Microsoft and Tesla. That's it for now. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please subscribe to this channel and like the video. If you have any questions, please feel free to drop me a comment. I'm looking forward to seeing the upcoming videos. Thank you very much again. See you next time. Bye bye.